I'm Bevan McLean and I'm the director for Project Janzoon. Janzoon is a privately funded ecological restoration of the Abel Tasman National Park. So what we're interested in here is uh, stopping the negative factors in the park and starting to reintroduce some of the birds and animals that are missing from the park. Adele Island is a, is a great blueprint. It, it allows people right now to experience what the park uh, could become. So it's been uh, predator free for eight years. I had a number of birds uh, reintroduced, including recently Saddleback, and it's a spectacular example of where the park is heading. So at the moment we've got a significant trapping network across the park, uh, some 15,000 hectares of the park covered, and uh, that exerts quite a lot of control, particularly on stoats, but also to some degree on the rats, and uh, keeps them down at reasonable levels under normal conditions. So this year we faced a beech mast in, in the park, first time for many years. A beech mast is a very heavy seeding by all five species of beech that exist in the park, and what that does is create a huge food resource for uh, rats. The traps themselves aren't able to keep up with the number of pests that are on the ground. And there's so many of them that um, the aerial 1080 is the only um, practical solution at this stage. The operational area today is just over 11,000 hectares, which is um, approximately half of the park. I'm Professor Charles Eason. I'm a toxicologist at Lincoln University, involved in wildlife management, and I've been involved in studying toxins and pest control technology for 20 or 30 years. 1080 is sodium monofluoroacetate, or fluoroacetate as it's commonly referred to, and fluoroacetate is both a plant toxin and a vertebrate pesticide or toxin or poison. It does exist in nature, it's found commonly in plants in Australia, South America and Africa and in those plants where it's at high concentrations it's a deterrent to browsing herbivores and it's part of the natural evolution of plants and animals and a protective mechanism for plants. Here, roger that, 600. My role today is to manage the operations log and uh, one of the main purposes on the main purpose behind that is to record how much bait goes out. We want to make sure that we know where every single kilogram of bait has gone. This operation is um, months and months, or actually for this project, years of planning, starting off with consultation with um, various um, stakeholders. My role is a project planner and it began probably in the end of um, 2012. We've talked to hundreds of directly adjacent landowners, concessionaires, interested parties, it would be hundreds of people. Um, the first thing we talk about is, is Project Yanzoon, um, the aspirations and, and those things that threaten those aspirations such as um, possums, rats and stoats. I think talking to people is the important process. It's, if without talking to people you don't hear their views, you don't hear their concerns. They presented uh, the case very well uh, for 1080 use. We just wanted the assurance that uh, the safety measures are in place. Uh, Torren Bay Township has a water supply, township for water supply. Uh, we wanted to be sure that it, uh, there was no, no poisoning of the water supply, uh, that the drops are, we understand are very uh, minimal and are very precise in their, their drop locations. So um, we were given all those assurances. So I think like any, any part of the public, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with what's going to happen. The concession is a key part of, of the activities in the park, particularly over the summertime. So a lot of visitors come in those summer months, they travel by water taxi or, or sea shuttle or by uh, kayak. The challenge for the concession is that we, was that we were going to have to have signs on uh, all of the beaches through the park uh, indicating that there had been a poison operation in the park. I'm Paul Smith from Abel Tasman Sea Shuttle, one of the concession here holders in the National Park. I wasn't happy about 1080 for a start, but the biggest thing was education. Devon came and sat with us, with Martin Rod, and they actually explained it to us. They did graphs, they showed us the birds that were there and have been extinct 
and what they were trying to do with the extensive trapping they're doing and the, the lines. Um, it was the only tool they really had to use, or it was available to be used, with the beach mass full. Well, our, our uh, regional plan says that, that the aerial application of 1080 requires a consent from the council. And that's basically a rule that we've created under the Resource Management Act. Uh, 1080 is a poison, and uh, putting it into the environment means, means that it has to be managed appropriately, and you have to avoid any risk of contamination to water and to people. Well, we put uh, about 25 conditions on, on this uh, application. The conditions sort of relate to things around making sure that the bait's dropped in the right place and uh, that notice is given to people who may be uh, in the drop zone. There are certain mon monitoring obligations that encoded into the consent. One of the uh, Ministry of uh, Health requirements is that we disconnect water supplies and it's a matter of taking a pipe out and disconnecting it so that water no longer flows through the pipe down into the camp. One of the main focuses of these consent conditions is making sure the operation goes safely and that's protecting the, protecting the public. We're applying the bait at 2 kilograms a hectare so that's about 22-23 tonnes of 1080 baits. 1080 works by when it's been absorbed into an animal, it, it distributes throughout the body and it has an effect on something called the Krebs cycle and that uh, suppresses energy production in the animal, the animal becomes subdued and in the case of a possum it will become quite sleepy and quiet and then it will die of a combination of heart failure and respiratory depression around 8 to 24 hours after ingesting a bait. It's not so nice for dogs and that is really why um, it's so important to keep dogs away from baits, away from possum carcasses after a 1080 operation. Uh, we, uh, the geospatial team, we audit the drop of the bait, uh, ensuring that it's uh, inside the resource consent. And we have two boundaries, we have an operational boundary which the helicopter flies to and then a 100 metre buffer to the resource consent. The stripes down here are where the um, helicopter's gone and the bait has been dropped. The, the blue line is the resource consent. The operational boundary um, sits on the, on the purple line and these are the helicopter flight lines um, and where the bait drops well outside um, Torrent Bay water supply. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the helicopters are doing their job and are spot on. Nobody has actually ever been poisoned in New Zealand from 1080. Uh, deliberately or otherwise and it, it's due to the diligence of those operators, pest control operators in DOC and others who, who use the compound to ensure that humans are not put at risk. You can pass on to Rudy and whoever's walking from Castle Rocks down to Tin Line they can all make a start over. We have a lot of people staff out on the tracks where the public may be and once that um, area has been covered by the helicopters, by the, the, the bait, then um, we, have, we have staff who are walking those tracks. My job today was to clear the track of all, any baits, the Falls River track, and now I'm getting to the end of the day, I'm going down to reopen the track. Um, we've got perfect conditions for the operation. It was carried out very much uh, to the plan. Uh, on the day and um, the monitoring of the helicopters and the monitoring of the bait drop uh, indicated that we'd got good coverage and that we'd stayed well within the boundaries of the consent area. So very pleased with the way the operation was conducted. So what we saw um, immediately prior to the drop was a rapid escalation in the number of rats in the park. Um, the counts uh, from the tracking tunnels which were done about six weeks before the operation itself got up to 35% as a kind of an index of, of rat numbers and the week after the drop was concluded it was down to 1% which is exactly the uh, type of result we would expect from this operation but it's great to know it works. So Project Janzoon's focus continues to be to control the negative influences in the, in the park and obviously these pests are key amongst those. Hold them at the lowest levels we can, uh, be ready to respond to a, a problem condition such as, as a beach mast, but now we're hoping that the birds will be able to flourish and we'll be working actively to reintroduce uh, more birds that have been lost from the park uh, into, the, into the park over the next few years. <laughs>